originally when that fight first happened, uh, when the fight was announced, uh, I would tell Habib, he's going to come after you, your family, your country, your religion, your, your, your father, you know, even your manager, and maybe even me. I'm not sure mm. about me, but he's coming after you, and I want you to be prepared. Stay relaxed. Don't let it boil, you know, boil you up and get you upset because you do that, he wins. Mm. So you need to do that. I would tell him almost every other day he's coming after you, and he did. So every time Connor did, Habib beat him every single time. Yeah, yeah. Every single time, Habib was cool and calm, didn't react because he was trained from yeah. two months out that this was going to happen. So as it started happening, it wasn't affecting him very mm. much at all. As a matter of fact, Connor got checkmated quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, he'd, he'd show up. Because it wasn't uh, working. Yeah, it wasn't working. He'd come in, like, you know, have a, have a drink, and I'd be like, I don't drink. You yeah. know, he knows that, you know. It didn't rile him up. Yeah. It's, he knew these things were going to come. And uh, what ended up happening is uh, we were going to do, you know, the, the, the press conference where they, they both have him come speak, and Habib says, Coach, I'm obligated to be here for 20 minutes, and this is my start time. I'm going to come out at my start time. If Connor doesn't show up, bye-bye. I'm That's leaving. It, I'm I said, yet. what do you think? I said, it's perfect. So guess what? We go out there. Guess who's not there? Yeah, Connor's not there. Yeah. So Habib did his 20 minutes. He got booed. The vast, vast majority of the yeah, people yeah, yeah. booed him because it was like 90% Connor fans. Yeah. You know? So they booed him, and Habib said, thank you very much, but I'm going to smash your boy. You know, yeah, la, yeah, la, yeah. La. And then uh, the idiot comes about... You know, ten minutes after, like thinking, no, yeah, yeah. you know, and there's like nobody there, and yeah. it's like you got checkmated again, buddy. Oh, so I'm gonna introduce the episode, and we get ready to go straight away. We're not going now. You know what? We're going now, coach. We're Let's live. Do, do you know what? I'm not going to argue. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's do it. We're live from now. Have welcome, welcome back to Dubai, and welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm uh, thoroughly shocked at how beautiful this studio is, and you know all the characters that you have everywhere, from huge movie stars to to comic, you know, comic book movie star, uh, not movie stars, but comic book heroes. Yeah. You know, it's it's his. This is a kids Disneyland, also an adult Disneyland. Yeah, you right. know, As far as view in the museum type thing you know it's just beautiful yeah that's the way we like to to keep the vibe here kind of thing you know and especially that like, people don't expect it when they come in and they're just like hold on what <laughs> what did i just walk into like yeah crazy. yeah I, I didn't expect that you know when you guys had your 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 car pick me up i look at the car i said hotty i go they got their own car <laughs> he goes yeah i go oh okay they must be a little bit you know more yeah. higher up because i didn't expect that i'm like yeah. Just get on Skype, coach. We're going to get yeah, on exactly. in an hour, you know, and like, no problem. How do you feel about doing the ones on Skype? I, I think that when you're doing like these kind of episodes, when you're actually interacting physically and you're there, it's like such a better vibe than just be sitting, you know, with like no shorts on, <laughs> just with the screen and you, yeah. you got well, a shirt on top. Well, this is by far a better vibe, you know. Uh, the, the only difference is that you could be anywhere, on Skype anywhere yeah, and yeah. you can do it, but uh, you don't get the same feel, obviously. Yeah, yeah, there's exactly. no way. There's no way you can get the same feel. And... On top of that, the 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 other ones they're doing on Zoom, right? They only yeah, yeah. they only go forty minutes now. I got cut off yesterday. I was doing one yesterday, and after the forty minutes, it cut off. Yeah, you go, you have to have a special one that you pay for. That yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so yeah. most <laughs> most people episode, most yeah. people are not in your league. It right happens there. like this here. After forty minutes, the electricity just cuts oh, off. Oh really? We got to put it back on. <laughs> oh okay. I'm not gonna get jumped after forty minutes. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Okay. Definitely not. I think you're the safest bet. If there's anyone around who's not gonna get jumped, <laughs> it's gonna be you. Yeah. Okay, dude. Again, I'm humbled by your presence and been a big fan for a long time. And you're a legend in the game. Um, it goes without saying. You've coached, you know, Hall of Famers, DC, Velasquez, um, Habib, and Islam now. Um, so it's a real pleasure to actually have you here and, and be able to have the conversation. And thanks for taking out the time. And, and Dubai now, how do you feel about the welcome it's given to the UFC, the Emirates itself? Well, you know, right from the get-go, I mean, the the welcome the Emirates gave, you know, UFC and us, Habib team, is, is just unbelievable. The hospitality from Nas, 
you know, here in Dubai, you know, for Prince Hamdan, what he's done for us, and Ahmed Jabber and the whole crew there, and just took name. care of us really well. And uh, then we go to Abu Dhabi, you know, from uh, Abdulwanam, you know, in Palm yeah. Sports, and Mr. Fod, his right hand guy, his director for UAE Warriors. Uh, they're unbelievable. They become brothers with me, you know, and uh, I love those guys. They're, they're incredible. They do. They're doing a great thing for the UAE, you know, and, and creating uh, awareness in mixed martial arts and jujitsu. I mean, where in the world do you know uh, of a city that only has maybe a million seven hundred thousand people, but yet it has two hundred and fifty thousand plus active jujitsu? Yeah, and it's students. like a staple here. I mean, jujitsu here is even, you know, even in the army, even in all these things, they make sure that it's getting done everywhere. And I feel like out here, they're really pushing the competitive jujitsu as well, which is really cool for the community and stuff. And, and it's absolutely amazing. And also the facilities here, like where you guys are training. Yeah, second to none. You know, second it's, to it's, none, yeah, right? Second to none, yeah. Facilities are incredible. The hospitality is second to none i mean when you come down here it's like you just kind of like what the heck's going on here just like i came into your studio i'm mm. like what the hell is going on here <laughs> yeah everything's a shock here you know it's like you guys have that wow shock effect good feeling you know yeah if you're gonna do it you might as well do it right well you've done it right <laughs> appreciate it, right. it man so you know not i mean a lot of people in the U in the mma world know your history as a kickboxer um a lot of people from the outside know you as the coach right I mean, I even saw a picture back in the day of your kickboxing, holding the holding the belts, wearing a belt and holding it. You look like a the boss at the end of blood sport. Like you had the <laughs> look on point. From that kickboxing career, where did you go from there to deciding I'm going to switch to MMA? Because I heard that you, you, you did it by accident, right? Yeah, I got involved in MMA more by accident. Uh, well, I was, uh, I was a real estate by agent by trade, you know, and at the same time as kickboxing, no, I gave up the real estate trade to pursue the kickboxing because you can't really be successful if you're going to do real estate and kickboxing. I had mm -hmm. to give it up. So I gave up the real estate. I became poor, which yeah. I was poor as a real estate agent anyway. So it didn't make any difference, but I, I had to do something part time and I was coaching a few students and I was like privates, you know, lessons while I trained in kickboxing. And uh, as a result of that, um, one of my instructors was Scott Coker, who's the president of Bellator, okay. you know, now. Uh, back then, he was just my instructor. <laughs> and uh, he started throwing fights uh, that called uh, Strike Force. No, before that, it was not Strike Force. It was uh, ESPN or something. I forgot the name of it, but he had thrown events on television way back then so i used to help him with all the kickboxers etc cetera, etc cetera. and i got involved through him in the fight game so i became a fighter through scott coker after you know fighting for him and winning two world titles you know light cruiserweight and then uh, 1992 and then 95 won light uh, light heavyweight i retired and during that time i was fighting i had a bunch of students and one of them was named brian johnston and uh, Brian Johnson was my first introduction to the UFC. You know, at that particular time, I knew nothing about the UFC, but Brian Johnston wanted to be involved. So he asked me if I knew anybody in the UFC. And I said, well, I know R. Davey, you know, because R. Davies was the matchmaker yeah. that originally started the UFC and uh, uh, matchmaker for the UFC. He didn't start the UFC, he was matchmakers. Yeah. That That's a big difference. Yeah, yeah big yeah. difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so R. Davies was the matchmaker. I called him up. I said, hey, I have a, I have a heavyweight that would I like to enter into your competition. You know, he does judo with uh, Mike Swain and he, you know, who's the first American that ever won a world, uh, you know, judo championship mm. and, 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 uh, and from the U.S. And R. Davies says, okay. And I said, how big he was? I sent a picture. And back then, if you looked at the UFC, everybody was huge, right? Mm. Every, if you, The bigger you were, the better you were for them, mm. uh, the image, right? So they took Brian Johnston in. And uh, as a result of Brian Johnston, I met Frank Shamrock. Okay. You know, and it was because of Brian that, that I got introduced to Frank. Uh, as a result of that, Frank became the first uh, champion that I trained. Uh, he, the first UFC uh, middleweight champion, Frank Shamrock, was with me. And as a result of Frank Shamrock, I got involved with uh, BJ Penn. And BJ Penn Absolute came to legend. me. Yeah. Uh, before BJ Penn fought in the Mundals, you know, the world, right? Yep. BJJ, <laughs> he, he told me that once he wins the Worlds, he wants to come and train with me because I trained Frank, so he wants to train with me. Well, he won the Worlds. He was the first 
uh, non-Brazilian to win it. So then he came and started training with me. As a result of him, we got more people, you know, and uh, they went on from there and there. You know, mm. there's countless many fighters, but that's how basically it started. Wow. I mean, BJ Penn was <clears throat> was incredible. I, I mean, I think he is one of the very few people that got his black belt in jiu-jitsu in less than five years. I believe so. I believe so. Yes. Which is very hard, to very hard to do. I yeah. think this is one of the important things about uh, jiu-jitsu as well is that you can get white belts that compared to a normal person in the street are so dangerous to a normal you know for somebody who isn't doing jiu-jitsu and someone is and they don't just throw out belts like it's like it's candy you know every you know it takes a good amount of years to become a black belt in jiu-jitsu and i think that's really important yeah well the one thing that uh, that uh, people uh don't understand about jiu-jitsu and even though i don't do jiu-jitsu i understand when you get into jiu-jitsu, you do contact right away. Mm. So it's just like sparring in, in boxing or kickboxing. You don't spar when you enter a kickboxing or a boxing arena. You don't. Mm. You, you practice, you practice, you practice, and you rarely get to spar. Okay, well, in jiu-jitsu, in judo, in wrestling, what do you do right away? What else is there to do? It's like somebody's going to be on top right of right you away. one way or another. So yeah. it's just like actually a street fighter, right? If you mm. got a person that's had one street fight versus a person that's had 400 street fights, if you put the guy that had 400 street fights versus the person that had less than 10, who more likely is going to win? Yeah, yeah. It's common, right? Mm. So basically that's why I equate jiu-jitsu as being so incredibly mm. dominant because they go for it right away. And jiu-jitsu is for self-defense, right? Uh, wrestling is competitive, right? Mm. Judo is competitive. Jiu-jitsu is competitive, but it's been mostly for self-defense, yeah. you know, and that's why it's so effective. And, you know, when people come to me, they ask me, you know, what should I do? Should I do this? I say, well, if you can only take one art, you need to take jiu-jitsu. And they're looking at me, but you're a kickboxer. I go, yeah, I know yeah. enough yeah. <laughs> that I know what's the best art. Through I'm experience. telling you right now, yeah, yeah. yeah jiu-jitsu is what you want to do. I mean, especially through the Gracie School, um, it started off so much more self-defense than anything else and and they famously used to have people come in there and, and you know challenge them and be like all right let's get a bodybuilder in here <coughs> yeah and well, see what you can do they themselves started that they go to people and challenge them so mm. they started that you know and good thing they did because look where i'm at now if it wasn't for what they did you know i wouldn't have this uh great life that i've being able to create for myself with the, the the amount of people that I've been lucky enough to come through the doors of my gym. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's incredible when so, when somebody starts. Like I had Hoist on the show a while ago, and we were talking about just how crazy it is that when you start something that spreads globally all over the world, and you can pretty much go to pretty much anywhere now, and you'll find a jujitsu school somewhere. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, you talk about a Hoist and stuff, and then, and then uh, you look at the whole thing why they chose him because he looked the most this the college the the college yeah. kid he didn't you know they didn't pick hickson who was the, exactly the, the, the baddest of all of them yeah you know they picked hoist who looked like the mild-mannered clark kent yeah know? exactly and, and he comes that, out and does what he does and it was the right choice it was the right choice uh because people couldn't believe how this guy you yeah. know he tapped out just dan severin and all these beasts and well because they knew something nobody else knew especially in ufc one where there weren't any rules really yeah that was going on and there wasn't I don't think there was referees either, was there? I, there wasn't judges, I think or there, there wasn't was. Referees? I think I think there was referees. Yeah. I, I think there was, but it was fight till you're done. Yeah, fight till <laughs> you're like, done. There's yeah, no, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah, rounds or whatever. Yeah, yeah. If we're having to fight for 25 minutes, I mean, famously, Hoist and Ken Shamrock went on for, I think it was two hours for one of their fights, right? Yeah, it was a while. Yeah, it was a while. I don't quite remember, but it was a while. It That's was, crazy. And they went to a draw, if I remember correctly, mm. right? Because no, they couldn't finish each other. Yeah, exactly. Right. You, know, it's just so, like, yeah. you know, the end of it, it's yeah. just like two people yeah, just yeah. slapping <laughs> and stuff. So with wrestling and jiu-jitsu being so imp big in MMA, how important do you think kickboxing is going to be in the future of MMA? I think kickboxing uh, is, is coming now. Uh, to the point where it's becoming very important. And uh, you look at people like uh, you know, Alex Volnowski. I didn't pronounce his name right. Okay. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Alex. <clears throat> uh, Israel Adesanya, you know, uh, he's proven that, you know, you can become a world champion and a great one at that. Both of those guys are great, and they come from a kickboxing background. Mm -hmm. So they're two of the first prototype that can come over and cross over, you know, so it is becoming uh, important for, for the kickboxers to have that kind of skill set, but it's still more based on who can take the fight where. So if you have an individual that's got a great wrestling and can dictate the fight and take you to the ground and dominate you there, then that's basically that's the still going to yeah, yeah. the way to go. But 
these guys are coming so good. These kids are training since they're four years old, five years old in wrestling, jujitsu, and they're learning the kickboxing and the boxing. So the new generation is going to be everywhere. So it's not going to be a matter of styles. It's going to mm -hmm. be a matter of athletes, you know, and, and uh, that's what it's going to come down to strategies and athletes. Yeah. I mean, I think that MMA in general has, has changed the world in a sense, even outside of the gym. You got to be very careful now in the streets because most people are taking up some kind of MMA that's going on. And the person you least expect it, like it's not about picking fights in the bars anymore because yeah. you don't know who. But me, ten, I tend to look for the ears. If I see the ears of Rip Conley Proud, I'm like, yeah, stay away from well, that. Guy. Well, if you're in the UAE, you ain't got to worry about anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, exactly. There's no yeah, trouble yeah. here. So so for me, it's like uh, I'm just doing it for recreation. I'm doing it for mental health and this and that. But I'm not going to worry about being self-defense here and not yeah, yeah. it's so safe here it's crazy yeah so when you first saw Khabib and your first interaction with him what was your initial off the spot jump well the first your time thoughts? I saw him he he didn't understand English whatsoever so that was a big barrier that yeah, yeah. we had um so I watch him spar and I'd always say man this guy is incredible he kills everybody he killed everybody Everybody. And I, but I would tell him, I said, you know, when he's sparring, I said, Habib, relax, relax. And man, he'd go crazy. Go, more than more. Yeah, he'd <laughs> go kill these guys. And I'm like yeah. going, man, I, this guy would be the best if he could just learn to relax. And, uh, you know, he was only with me at the beginning, like one month at a time. So it would be like three weeks. Mm. And then fight week, he'd take off. So it was only three weeks period that he was with me. So he didn't get that much from me at the very beginning. Um, so, but about the second time he came over, he learned to speak a little bit better English. And uh, he goes to me, he goes, coach, uh, you know, when you tell me relax, relax, I go, yeah. He goes, oh, I was confused. I thought you meant go harder. <laughs> so <laughs> the whole like, time. The whole was... time I'm going, oh my, I, this guy doesn't listen. All of a sudden I realized, oh, he does listen. Because yeah. every time I said relax, he'd go harder. Going harder. Yeah, he you needed the hand gestures. Like, yeah. Relax. Yeah, 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 relax. It's because you were just like, yeah. relax, relax. Yeah. And he was just turning it yeah. up. Yeah. There's a lot of funny things on 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 uh, that I've encountered with the guys. I'll give you in in relation to me and them, right? Um, with Zubaira, right? Who's mm -hmm. one of his teammates. It just happened a couple of days ago. Um, Habib comes up to me. He goes, uh, you know, they're playing Dagestan basketball, which they run around. They don't dribble. It's different. They <laughs> tackle each other. You know, they throw the ball, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, when you're trying to shoot, they foul you and there's no yeah, foul. Yeah. They'll take you down. There's no yeah. foul. It's, it's just level changes. Yeah, it's level <laughs> changes, yeah. So Habib says, coach, I, I'm going to bench Zuba. No, I'm going to take Zuba out of the game because he's not doing well. So I, I go to Zuba. I go, Zuba, you got benched, huh? Yeah. And he goes, what, what What do you mean, coach? What did you say? I said, you got benched. He goes, no, no, no. He goes, I go, I look at him. I go, Zuba, do you know what I'm talking about, right? He goes, because he was angry, right? He's angry at me. He goes, no. He goes, what do you mean? I said, okay, Zuba, you weren't playing good in basketball, <laughs> right? He goes, oh, no, I wasn't. I go, well, Habib said you want to sit down. Yeah. He goes, oh. He goes, what did you think I meant? He goes, Oh, I think you call me, and I went. No, I would never, I would never <laughs> call you that. Never. Lost in translation, yeah, lost right? in translation. And so I'm thinking, I've been talking to these guys, and, and uh, today uh, he was sparring again, and I'm looking at Zuba, and I'm giving him instruction. I go, Zuba, I go, I want you to, you know, this is ground and pound, do some MMA ground and pound, and he's like, okay, okay, and. and uh, Habib goes, coach, he doesn't know what you're talking about. I go, you're <laughs> like, kidding okay, me. He yeah. didn't know. He goes, no, he didn't know. I yeah. go, all this time I've been telling Zuba, Zuba, I, you know, I need you to ground and pound. I go, yeah. like, hold one hand with the other hand. He's like, he goes, yes, yes, but yeah. he doesn't know what the heck I'm talking about. So yeah. it's all over again. The same thing with these guys. It's you like, know what you should have said? Zuba, relax. <laughs> relax, <laughs> he would have gone, he he yeah, gone straight exactly, into it. Yeah. But I think that's the one thing that stands out most about the AKA team and, and the whole vibe is you guys just the banter that goes on and the family vibe of you know you guys being able to say to each other and 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 make fun of each other but in a way that they know is coming from a place of love correct correct uh we we look mma is not a team it's mm. not a team sport it's individual sport but i tried to create the best atmosphere as a team and the reason being is if i created a team that's going to be there for each other when this person's fighting 
that person that already fought that you were there for, you're going to be there for that person. Mm. And it was extremely important because MMA is not like in a boxing situation, right, where you can pay for the best sparring yeah, partners yeah. and you bring them down, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I figured that the best way to do it is get a team, you know, build a strong team, make them all accountable for each other. You know, they all, they, it's not like you're the champion, you get all the rights. No, 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 no. Like say, for instance, when Habib was fighting, right? Let's say his months, uh, his fight's three months out. And I have some other fighters that have important fights, but their, their fight's like two months out. Well, when it comes to sparring, you would think that Habib would get priority. Mm. No, 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 no. Habib would not be the priority. The priority would be the person that has the closest fight that's further enough away. So that person would go. So we've learned that from the team, mm. you know, that we go in, you know, in leadership, you know, one, two, three, and then, you know, those type of things. Yeah, yeah if, if we don't do that, then we fall apart because then, then you become a champion. You think you can do whatever you want. Yeah, and I think that builds trust as well. Yes. You know, and they they know that <clears throat> you have their best interests at heart and it's not about, you know, just, hey, this is the star at the moment. We're going to put all of our, our, you know, focus on that person. Yes. So I think that for them means a lot and, and it is that whole family vibe. I mean, you don't watch many other places where you see the camaraderie like you guys have with DC who, as far as I'm concerned, can have a stand-up comedy career right now. He is hilarious. When you see his interactions with the other fighters, very similar to yours. It's very older brother kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And I feel like the respect is there between everyone, which which is amazing. And you can't you can't just buy that. You know no, what I mean? no. The Habib in uh, DC chemistry is like... <laughs> It's unreal. I mean, uh, everybody that always sees it, they go back and watch these guys forever. They're crazy. Have they always yeah. been like that? Or yeah, always from the get-go. Yeah. Uh, you know, DC. Every time with DC, he'd go into the Russian uh, yeah, yeah. language, Dagestani yeah. language. You know, he, he wouldn't speak correct English to yeah, yeah. DC would go into their language. I was cracking up all but the time. I feel like that's something that's done anyway because I do that personally. Whenever I'm in another country or talking to another country, I kind of change my English just so yeah. it kind of suits, you know, the person kind of thing. And I think that the whole lost in translationship, uh, translation builds the relationship more than if it was, if they were both Americans. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and it does. You're correct. You know, um, the, the relationship that they, that they built uh, with, with each other, it, it's, it's based on DC bringing himself down and, 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 uh, and then Habib, you know, accepting and bringing himself up so it's kind of like i brought myself down one brings himself up yeah. so it's kind of mutual then the other one will bring himself down the other one will go down, mm. down you know so up and down up and down they both do that and it works really well mm. it works really well and uh a lot of the other guys have adapted that kind of style that of dc and habib where they come in and they you know interact with each other and uh i will admit it's not the same kind of chemistry but they mm. at least try yeah yeah so how does somebody join aka uh, basically, they just have to come to the gym. But if they are a known fighter, if they, they are like world known fighter and they're involved in uh, one of the, like say for instance, uh, I get somebody that's in the UFC and I already have a fighter in that particular weight, weight class. class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it has to get approval from that particular person. It doesn't matter who it is. It has to be that person that's there has to accept them. And if he doesn't accept so, them, he doesn't get accepted. So you'll get approval from your fighter first if it's okay yeah. for them to come and train. Yeah, I get, I get approval from that fighter first. Then I get approval from the coaches. Then I get approval from all the other fighters. Because if there's a problem with that particular individual, we can't have them there. Mm. No, we screwed up before, trust me. So we yeah. try not to. We I messed up before when I allowed something to happen. I should have never let it happen. But, uh, you know, it's very tough. To, to keep us together but i try the best i can and and uh, so far we're still together as a team you know probably the longest out of any any team in the history of mm -hmm. the mma you know uh we're still together as a top team you know we've been around since as a team 1997 and it actually wow. started with frank shamrock yeah. it was frank shamrock's uh, uh team first it wasn't my team it was frank shamrock shamrock's mission fighting academy is what it was uh then from there you know, I took it over, but it, but it was really, really started with Frank Shamrock. Well, is there any particular reason why you didn't train Ken? I didn't know Ken, <clears throat> but when when I trained Frank, he came to to San Jose, California, and they lived in an, another area uh, in Northern California, mm. and uh, I didn't I didn't uh, I never I never so met Ken. Yeah. No, I didn't meet Ken. No. So I've, I mean, 
again, it's crazy because you've literally trained so many people who have gone on to the Hall of Fame, who are, are just legends in their own right. Who would you say, out of all of them, had the biggest transformation under your tutelage? Came to Alaska's. Alaska's? Yeah. Yeah, he he uh, he got the most out of me out of anybody. I mean, he when you if you sit and you talk to him and you have all the knowledge he's gotten uh, on how to think, how to, uh, the striking and everything. Yeah, he's he's got he's got the whole package. You know, the next one, not quite like Kane, but but has the mental part. Habib, mm. Habib, Habib has yeah had quite a bit of that. And uh, you know, the great tutelage he got from his father growing up he's i see that when he's coaching the guys when he's scolding the guys out chewing them out for you know mm. five ten minutes and that's, that's what i used to see his father do his father would yeah. be on these guys you know 15 20 minutes when they screw up his father be on them blah 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 professional doesn't do this i mean his father was incredible yeah he was incredible very strict but very loving and very caring i mean i think you have to have that level of strictness as a parent right it's, it's one of those as a parent you don't want to be too strict with your children but it's one of those this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you kind of things where i need to be like this on one side to get the best out of you yes there there there's there is that way that works and i, I have another approach that i do and it's more based on on love mm -hmm. more i use more of the love effect and and that works for me uh the strictness uh that doesn't work as well for me i i, I it's it's it hurts me mm. to hurt them so i so i use another approach i have to find another approach otherwise to be honest with you i wouldn't be good at what i do because you know i i, I wouldn't be able to sleep if i yell at them mm. and this and that and i'm only doing this for your own good type thing yeah. i i use another approach because it works for me you know and it doesn't may not work for that person that i'm teaching when he teaches somebody but it definitely works mm. for me do you have that kind of feeling of connection where you do feel that fatherly connection with in the sense of like you said you do things out of love where they are kind of like your children your students in a broader sense if you know what i mean in in in, in some sense i do in some sense because when when they they look at me and like for instance i'll use my dagestani guys habib's crew uh you know i can honestly tell you in, in the 12 years since i've been with habib no, 10 years. I'm sorry, not 12, because he came 2012. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, <laughs> coach got his mind scrambled. <laughs> it's all right. You can so, have a couple uh, of years. Yeah, <laughs> I'm only going to be a couple of years yeah, off. Yeah. But in, in, the, in the 10 years that, that they've been with me, you know, I've never had one of his uh, team disrespect me in any way. Not once. Not one time. Wow. You know, and that's pretty amazing uh, to have these guys so disciplined like that and, and respect their elders and their coaches. And, and uh, that, that, that they are through and through. Uh, uh, all of them yeah, they, co they come from a different cloth to be honest because back home where they are in Dagestan it's like it's very straight do you know what I mean there is no kind of messing around and that's why when the Connor thing started getting a bit too much I was like it's not the right people to do this with not it's like there's certain people that you trash talk and take it to a certain level and there's other people that just don't accept that stuff yeah well you know originally when that fight first happened uh, when the fight was announced, uh, I would tell Habib, he's going to come after you, your family, your country, your religion, your, your, your father, you know, even your manager, and maybe even me. I'm not sure mm. about me, but he's coming after you, and I want you to be prepared. Stay relaxed. Don't let it boil you, know, boil you up and get you upset because you do that, he wins. Mm. So you need to do that. I would tell him almost every other day he's coming after you, and he did. So every time Connor did, Habib beat him every single time. Yeah, yeah. Every single time Habib was cool and calm, didn't react because he was trained from yeah. two months out that this was going to happen. So as it started happening, it wasn't affecting him very mm. much at all. As a matter of fact, Connor got checkmated quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, he, he'd show up. it wasn't uh, working. Yeah, it wasn't working. He'd come in, like, you know, have a, have a drink, and I'd be like, I don't drink. You yeah. know, he knows that, you know. It didn't rile him up. Yeah. He knew these things were going to come. And uh, what ended up happening is uh, we were going to do, you know, the, the, the press conference where they, they both have him come speak, and Habib says, Coach, I'm obligated to be here for 20 minutes, and this is my start time. I'm going to come out at my start time. If Connor doesn't show up, bye-bye. I'm yes, leaving. I'm I said, yet. what do you think? I said, it's perfect. So guess what? 
We go out there. Guess who's not there? Yeah, Connor's, Connor's not there. Yeah. So Habib did his 20 minutes. He got booed. The mass, vast majority of the yeah, people yeah. booed him because it was like 90% Connor fans. Yeah. You know, so they booed him. And Habib's, thank you very much, but I'm going to smash your boy. You know, yeah, la, yeah, la, yeah. La. And then uh, the idiot comes about, you know, 10 minutes after, like thinking, no, yeah, yeah. you know, and there's like nobody there. And but it's that, like, you got checkmated again, buddy. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. The, he, the mind games. Yes. He made yeah. him feel like he yes. wasn't ready because. I think the one thing we've, I mean, we all know that, you know, you can win a fight before the fight just by, you know, the mind games and stuff. And I think what surprised Conor the most is that it wasn't getting to Khabib and where you had the Aldos and that before that were getting so frustrated by it. And you saw in the Aldo fight, that was a different Aldo. He wanted to get just, you know, how stiff he was. Yeah. He was, he wasn't loose. It's because of the anger that Conor, you know, developed inside him. Well, the problem with Connor is, uh, you know, he was using the art of war tactics, mm. okay? And I already knew what he was doing. Yeah, and he like, I read that I was, book. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't read the book, but I knew what he was doing. Yeah. And I knew he was going to, the trigger points. That's yeah, why yeah. I trained Habib earlier on. And I'm sure his father did also, you know, and yeah. told him to stay relaxed and calm. And uh, so we, we were one step ahead of him. Had I not watched him do it to everybody else, mm. Maybe I wouldn't have been. Maybe if we were the first ones that he did it to, maybe I would have been caught off guard too. Mm. But I wasn't off guard because I watched him. I watched him do it to Jose Aldo. I watched him to Chad Mendez. You know, I watched him do it to all these guys. And I said, okay, okay. So yeah, that's I why I knew. You know, it wasn't like I have a crystal ball, right? Yeah. I, <laughs> you, you were just observing. Yeah, I was observing. I mean, that's your job as a coach too, yes. to kind of know. It's not just inside, you know, the training and that, but to know the outside surrounding things that could be affecting people, right? Yes, correct, correct. That's crazy. How do you deal with ego clashes and different personalities inside between fighters well how i deal with it is that you know pecking order you know like i mentioned earlier uh, you, you have a fight in two months you have a fight in two weeks you may be the world champion and the best pound for pound fighter but you're not priority here that two week guy is because he's priority because you're he's so far away from you that you can take a backseat to him. Mm. And uh, that's how we do it. Also, we do another pecking order. Like, uh, if they make a mess and uh, the order is, like, say if Habib and I are just training and he makes a mess, coach doesn't clean the mess. Yeah, yeah. He cleans the mess. Yeah. So if you watch my, some of my videos, you'll see Habib cleaning. You'll yeah, see yeah. DC cleaning. The you'll see Kane Velasquez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because that's how I keep their egos in check because they're accountable for their actions. And when they become champion, yeah, they have certain privileges but they're not mm. left with no privileges i mean mean sorry that wasn't correct they're left with things that they're accountable for still mm. they have more privileges but they're still accountable if they're alone they have to clean if they mm. have some people below them then they don't have to clean the guys mm. below them clean i guess also that there's a humbling factor to that right as well that you have more responsibility now because you're our champion to show you know to show these good things to the to the younger guys and all that stuff that just because you became the champion you're not all of a sudden above everyone yeah you know it, it, it does work that way also you know and the, these guys felt uh good about sharing their experience with the fighters the up and coming guys and and the seasoned guys and and it was good it was a good bonding uh thing that we still do still to this day uh i have uh, a blah muhammad you know who's mm -hmm. fighting on this card yeah. and uh you know what he's uh, he's he's experiencing the the talks and he said what's really powerful about this team is not that they're 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 they're, they're great you know training partners but it's the talks you know we're having the talks after we're not i'm not used to that you know mm -hmm. and i said yeah well that's that's what keeps us uh, grounded and that's yeah. what keeps us growing you know because we pick the mistakes and and we're not afraid to tell you hey today you didn't do so well you need to do this you need to do that or today you did fantastic we're going to give you you know your your due you know clap you know your applause you know so we do all those things and it's very important that uh, and not all the time is it going to be you know great talking but it's always going to be meaning great talking like you did great today yeah, you yeah. did great today no some days you didn't do so yeah. well you know but hey we're going to end it with a good note you know you didn't do well today but i know tomorrow is going to be a better day you're going to do better tomorrow yeah. So you never leave the fighter down. You you give him something, you pick him up. Yeah, I mean, essentially, that's what you look for in a good friend, right? Yes. Like, who's not just going to hype you up when you're doing well. And if he sees you, you know, drifting or doing something wrong, he's got to be, like a real friend would be like, hold on, what are you doing here? Like, this is wrong. Or yes. can you not see what you're doing? Yes. Yes, that's correct. You can't let your friend do the wrong all the time. You know it's wrong. You say, mm -hmm. hey, look, this is wrong. But listen, why don't we work on this? Let's... 
leave the negative. Let's go on the positive. Let's do some positive things. Mm. But what you're doing not right now is negative. So do you really want to be there? I don't think you do. You know, so let's work on something. I know you want it. You know, so mm -hmm. those are the type of empowering type of uh, uh, talks you want to have with them. And, and those are the kind of things that happen with me and my other coaches. Habib's learning that today, you know, I, I was telling them exactly those words. I go, Habib, you know, when you scold these guys, leave it with an up. Give them an up. Don't yeah, just, just put a cherry on the door. Yeah, just put so the cherry up top where they yeah. have a goal. They have a mission. They know you love them. Yeah, it's like you don't want to sleep having an argument, right? It's exactly. like the worst thing that you want to do because you'll just be up at night thinking, oh, man, <laughs> yeah. I just got mauled. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like I got today. mauled. Yeah, I got yeah. approved. And games, that can mess yeah. up the next day, right? Because then yeah. you come back in with that negative feeling that yeah. you left with yeah. instead of coming in like, okay, they said it in this way, ended it with a, okay, tomorrow let's just do better kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like motivating. Yeah, well, think about this. You know, who's going to fight the best for you? A person that hates you and fears you or the person that loves you? Who's going to fight the best for you? Who's going to be the most loyal to you? Whoever you're telling to relax. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Because the person that doesn't like you and you use fear to get him going, yeah, does yeah. he really want to do it? Yeah. He doesn't love you. He don't want to do it for you. He don't want to do it for himself because he hates you. Mm. You know, you don't want that. You want, you want, you know, to, to show them that they need to love what they're doing and you need to love what you're doing with them. I'm not mm. talking about loving each other. You don't have to love each other, but you have to love what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, you have to love what you do. Otherwise, it's just a job, right? It's not, you know. Yeah, you can't be successful. If you talk to any successful athlete any in any, any sport, if you ask them why they're so successful, if they hit on it, it's the love, then they know what they're doing. Yeah, if they, they don't hit on mm. it, they're doing it, but they just don't know they're doing it. Yeah, they, you couldn't picture them. They couldn't picture themselves doing anything else. So when they have that much love for it, it's just like it's... This yes. is just what I am, not just what I do. It's what I am kind of thing. Exactly. How, what is the secret sauce in AKA that's producing all of these champions? A lot of it's luck, you know, obviously, you know, uh, having Habib come to me through, uh, you know, uh, King Mo, you know, was one of my, was my, one of my strike force uh, world champions. Uh, he was Muslim and he said, Hey, I have, I have this Muslim kid that wants to come down. Is it cool? And I said, yeah, I'm all for you, anybody. You can bring whoever you want. I don't care. So that's how, you know, I got Habib. So it was luck, you know, and also having management. Uh, 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 I have this management company called Zinc and, uh, Zinc and Management uh, uh, that, you know, brought in Kane Velasquez, brought in DC, you know, and a few of the other guys like Josh Koscheck. So that partnership brought in guys like that. And then I recruited other people like Kung Lee, Mm -hmm. You know, like Luke Rockhold, you know, uh, and a few others, you know, like BJ Penn uh, came through because of connections through, you know, uh, Bobby Southworth, who was another world champion of mine that uh, trained with Hoff Gracie and uh, Bobby Southworth knew BJ. So it was, it was things like that. It's, a lot of it's luck, you know, and uh, being at the right place at the right, right time, yeah. you know, and uh, also, you know, uh, caring, you know, caring what you're doing and caring about these guys and, uh, you know, having that mindset to say, okay, they're not me. What can I do to help them be mm -hmm. them? Like the problem people have, I feel, is what made them successful, what made me successful is not, not going to make you successful. Yeah. So what I learned early on is don't teach you to be me, teach you to be a better you. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with raising kids. Like you can't raise kids based on how you were raised. Do you know what I mean? Because when times have changed, situations have changed, you've learned so much that you might not want to pass on that your parents passed on to you. Do you know what I mean? Like from how my parents raised me in the eighties to now, I don't think the same way as them. Right now, how I know this is something that you push, but how important is grappling now in, in the MMA world and how, what are your views on the difference between jujitsu and the Dagestani style and the Sambo and these things? Well, for me, you know, I push the grappling more than I do the stand up because, you know, uh, they control where the fight goes. So if you got a wrestling background, you know, I, I strongly urge you to spend more time on jujitsu than the stand up because that wrestling background is going to allow you to dictate where the fight goes. And if you have jujitsu, that's going to be a deadly combination. Yeah. yeah, you can keep it there. If you don't have jujitsu and you're just a wrestler. You know, guess what? Yeah. That guy's going to get, get back, back up. up. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're not doing enough damage. You know, he has somewhat knowledge of good, ju decent jujitsu. He's going to get back up. But if you're a good wrestler and you have great jujitsu or even just good jujitsu, what's, guess what's going to happen? You're going to destroy that person quite a bit. And uh, the mm -hmm. Dagestani guys have 
a lot of that with the sambo and and the wrestling and the the judo that they got from uh, from Habib's father Abdubanab. Mm -hmm. So that's why they have that going on there, you know. And uh, the stand up is fantastic, but if the guy is going to stand with you, what are you going to do? You can't stop him from taking you down. Mm -hmm. If you can stop him from taking you down, no problem. You got something. But if you can't, you're in trouble. Like Jose Aldo was one of the very few that that can stop yeah, you from yeah, taking him down yeah. you know but even then with him as good as he is he still had trouble with those guys because they'd hold him up against the cage and there's still some rounds a little bit here and there so it's still tough for him but he was one of the best uh stand-up guys that was able to to keep it on you know on, on the stand up mm. you know he was one of the very few how is it is for me seeing that corner fight changed something in him that i wish didn't happen um, I don't know if you felt that way too or, or the commu how the community feels, but I feel like that Conor fight switched something in him the way he was fighting after. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, he was reckless when that one. He was very yeah. angry and reckless, but, you know, it was a big plus for Conor because that's yeah. what he wanted and negative for Jose because after that he's had to play catch-up and he never really quite mm, got back. there. He yeah. almost did, right? He almost did, but never really quite got back there yeah that i mean that for me as a fan affected me in a way because it's like i feel like a lot of people after that fight instantly forgot all the stuff that jose's done and how long he was doing it for which is really important you, you can't forget stuff like that no he he was he's uh definitely one of the greatest ones of all time for mm. sure you know he's definitely up there and uh you know to what he did to to drop to 135 he came really close. I was very, very impressed with him. I said, wow, you know, he reinvented himself uh, and I, he almost did it. And, mm -hmm. then I, and then he retired. Yeah, exactly. You know, right? And I'm going, okay. So uh, I think that, that Andre, his, his coach, longtime coach, I think had a lot of big influence on him on, on retiring. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think he needed to retire, but, you know, it's like the one term uh, Floyd Mayweather, I just heard him say, he goes, uh, boxing, boxing retired him. Uh, meaning not Floyd, but mm. some other boxers. But but boxing didn't retire Floyd. Floyd mm. retired. Yeah, you know, which means he didn't that because he had yeah, to. He could, yeah, yeah, he could have continued. You know, and and when they say boxing retired, you means that you, yeah. you can't continue. To it compete. was only downhill yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah downhill yeah. from there. Like yeah. Habib, Habib uh, didn't let MMA retire him. Habib retired. So <clears throat> let's talk about that. How early on or before that fight did you know that was going to happen? I had zero idea. Really? Yeah, I had zero idea. I was like, I was like listening to him, and because you he, were there. Yeah, I was there. there. Yeah. It was, it was. We were there two months training. I mean, we're here in, in Abu Dhabi. You know, I'm Dubai in Abu mm. Dhabi. We're training, and he didn't say a word to me, not a word. And all of a sudden, he's retired. I'm like, I was just like, my whole world just went. But right away, I said, Ah, no problem. We're just gonna pick it up. We'll go somewhere else. But how did you feel when you saw him put those gloves on the floor? Like well, in that moment itself, were you just confused, or were you just? Like, I was. Com I was confused. I was like, is he tired today? What's going <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. on? I was confused, but I felt for him. Yeah, I you could see his father being gone really and weighed a big, 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 very, very big was weighed on him. You know, mm. and uh, that release he, for him to do what he did because his mother wanted him to yeah, retire. Yeah. You know, he said, uh, you know, his mother wanted him to retire, and, and he honored his mother's wishes. You know, so what are you gonna say? You know. It's, you know, no, mm -hmm. don't. I never discussed with him about why'd you retire? You shouldn't retire. No, uh, we just moved on, moved on. Well, and that takes me back to the whole Dagestani thing where his words, when they say stuff, it's done. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, no, no, I've said it. It's, there is no, my mother told me to retire. I'm done. I, you know, I yeah. promised her. It's not like, oh, like Tyson Fury. It's like, I'm retiring now. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, he's like, all right, who wants to fight kind of thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, you know, just to, to, to give you uh, basically another idea how he is about his word is, uh, you know, we had some one conversation one time. He goes, Coach, I never have a problem with you. He goes, I never have a problem with you. I go, well, why? Why do you say that? Because we have, we, have, we have words. We have our word. You have my word. I have your word. And I know you never break. Mm. And I said, you're right. I never will break. He goes, and you know, I never break promise. So... Mm. Uh, I know from personal experience yeah. that that uh, when he gives me his word, that's it. It's, it's done. So important as a man. No, yeah, you know, so it's a man. To do. Yeah, yeah. I don't need a contract. He doesn't need a contract. Him and I are like in that regard. When I give him my word, that's it. It's mm. done. 
What did you when you first went to Dagestan? What was the vibe there when you when you saw how they were doing things there? What was your initial kind of <laughs> apart from what are they eating to create these monsters? <laughs> yeah. Well, the first thing I noticed when I went there is I got off the air the airplane, right? And I'm going to the terminal and I hear this music, all this bunch of music, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? And then I look and I go, oh, they're having a celebration for somebody, right? And 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 I get closer. It's for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like going, what the heck's going on here, right? So they're doing this big celebration for me. Boom, boom you know, everything. Nine yards, they put a robe on me. And I'm like, I'm thinking like I'm some big, giant, important person that's coming in here, right? And as I got there, everywhere I went, people were approaching me, police officers, everybody from everywhere, coming pictures. They're saying, photo, photo, photo. And, I, and I'm looking at these guys. I go, man, I go, a lot of people know English here, right? They mm -hmm. go, what do you mean, coach? I said, well, they're always saying photo, photo. I go, no, coach, it's the same. English and, and, and Russian is the same language. I go, photos, photo? I go, yeah, photos, photo. I go, ah, no wonder, you know? Yeah. So it was incredible, um, the, the hospitality and in, in, in how well-known Habib is because over there, I'm extremely popular. Hmm. I was shocked. I was literally shocked. I'm not joking. I'd go in a restaurant. And the whole restaurant would come take pictures. Wow. Yeah, I'd go walking down the street. People from restaurants would come up and say, please, please, come come to come. my restaurant. Please. i go, okay, okay. And I'd come. And, yeah, they treat you with such great hospitality and warmth. It's unbelievable. And uh, uh, I was shopping at a store, you know, a grocery store. And, you know, I'm Instagram all the time. I'm always <laughs> on Instagram, right? So I'm looking at my Instagram and it says, AK Hob shops at our store. No way. I'm like going, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> You're like, that it's, was quick. That was quick. Yeah. They put me on. I'm walking through the shopping at their place and they're putting me on there. I'm going, wow. And then, so now if, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm in Dagestan, I've been there like three times, right? When I go through there sometimes, I'm not shocked anymore, yeah, you know, because yeah. I already know Habib is so immensely popular that, that I have to be popular mm. because he's popular. Yeah, I mean, no. you're everywhere on his page as yes, well. It's not, yes. it's no secret, that yes. the relationship that yes. you guys have together. Yeah, so so everybody knows the relationship. And I've been blessed. I've been blessed uh, to be in his life and, and, you know, to have him there, to be his coach, you know, along with his father. I was I was blessed, you mm. know, and uh, the results speak for themselves when I go there. It's like incredible, mm. incredible. And what the, if the, the way you were talking about and, and the way they train over there. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, what are they doing different? Or? This is what they're doing different, okay? Uh, I was with Islam Makhchev. I went uh, to a picnic. He goes, coach, come to my friends. There's some Olympic guy, wrestler guys, and some friends were going to go to have a picnic. And I said, okay. So we went, and uh, they had horse riding. They were riding horses and whatnot, and, uh, and they were cooking. And while they were cooking, they had their kids with them. And... They're out there wrestling. Their kids are. They're putting their kids together and they wrestle with each other. You know, <laughs> uh, like submission wrestling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and they're just going at it. Yeah. You know, and I'm just amazed how good they were. And at the end, they make shake hands and they go. And then the next one comes in and they wrestle. And that's common, common uh, uh, knowledge from yeah. everybody that lives there. That they do that all the time. As the invitations, they say, come to our barbecue, bring your kids. Yeah, bring your kids. <laughs> bring your kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We need the entertainment. Yes. Yes, yeah. that's what they do. And uh, the kids are so, I mean, they're so disciplined at a young age, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they're, they're, they're basically, they go to school, they go to Tsambo, you mm -hmm. know, they do something of that nature. They don't, they don't go screw around. They do some work, you know, and you know, when you go to a country and the kids know who you are mm -hmm. more than anything you know something's going on there i went there i was shocked all the kids knew who i was yeah that was a shock to me because adults usually know who you are kids yeah. don't know who you are yeah. you know over there uh -uh. kids know they who you are you. yeah yeah that's how involved they are with the kids that's crazy how do you deal with when like for example this connor khabib the kind of john jones dc when there's something very personal going on how does it affect you as a coach? Like you said, because you're very attached to your fighters, right? How do you deal with that and separate yourself from getting angry at some of the things that have been said? And Well, you know, with John Jones and, and, and DC, you know, <laughs> 
that's just two fighters going at it, and it was like there's legit hate between those two mm. guys. But what they did was was really not too much out of bounds. You know, John Jones didn't really didn't attack his wife, didn't attack his mm. religion. You know, so I was like, that's typical, mm. right? That's that's normal. So I wasn't too phased by that. I wasn't around when any of that happened. By the way, when DC. And John Jones went out. I was never around. Okay. It was always one of those things where when those fights happened, I wasn't there. So mm. it's ironically, you know, I, I never seemed to be there when these things happened. <laughs> you know, with the Habib Connor thing, uh, that was more personal. And that was more the one where I knew he was going to do what he did. But in all honesty, I don't like him. Mm. And the reason why I don't like him is uh, because he says things that he feels he's privileged to be able to say that 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 there's no accountability for. And the one, the final straw that got me is when he said, COVID good, father evil. Yeah, that and, was... And uh, I'm sorry, but that anybody that said that, I don't care who you are, I lost complete 100% respect for mm -hmm. him because the whole world suffered. A bunch of my friends lost their fathers. Habib lost his father, you know, and that's what he was referring to. Yeah, and for me, I go, you're the slimest of the slime. I go to go that low. The whole world suffered. The whole world. Mm. And you think it's funny and you're a millionaire now and you can do this, you can do that. But you said those words. How evil are you when you say that? To me, I'm sorry, but he's an evil person. I don't like him. Mm. I never will like him. And maybe if he apologized, maybe I will. No, nah, I probably will accept because that's what your, you know, what your heart tells idea. you to do. But you can't just say that. And look what he's done. He, he goes out there. He breaks his leg with the, with the dust in the last yeah. fight. And then what does he make? Obscene, yeah, obscene wife, gestures yeah. towards his wife. Mm. What kind of person does that? And and then how many people support person that? Who's losing really mentally. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to support that? I cannot support that. Mm. I cannot. I, I, I would be ashamed. If my son did that, I would be ashamed of him. Mm. You know, I definitely would be ashamed of him. But, you know, that's their business. That, you know, I... I'm not bothered by him, but I don't like him because of, of those comments. Not not the other. The other I didn't like, but those comments struck the it's whole world. It's a step too far, and it's like the, the, you don't have to take it that far just to get the views or the fights or the... Yeah, the whole know. world got affected that way, you know? And Okay, fine. You want to attack Habib and his family's religion? Okay, fine. But you, you those mm. last comments were directed at the world. Mm. That's insane. Right. <clears throat> you know this is going to come up. You're quoted to say that Islam Makachev is the most complete fighter ever. In the lightweight division. In the lightweight division. Say lightweight because, because <laughs> listen, if you didn't say lightweight, if you didn't say lightweight, let me tell you something. Uh, Demetrius. Oh, no, we're going to get into that later. Don't worry. Don't worry. They're trying to back out of this yeah, one. GSP, you know, GSP, you know, GSP you know, John Jones, my favorite, Cain Velasquez. You know where this is going. I mean, going. those guys come into the place. <laughs> you know where this is going. I yes. see you slipping. Uh, Khabib in his prime and Islam Makachev in his prime. Because I don't feel like Islam's got to his prime yet. I feel like he still has, he's still going to get better and better the more he fights. Yeah, he is. But 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 remember, you said well-roundedness. It didn't mm. say better. I don't think there's been anybody in my opinion that's better than Habib I don't I still don't yeah. but well-roundedness means that he can do everything Islam Makachev in my opinion in my opinion okay can do more than any lightweight I've ever seen he's good on the ground he's good on throws he's good at kicking he's good on boxing he's good on defense he's got great mental IQ the guy's got it all you know as far as the attributes of of a great 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 fighter that has all the tools you know Habib didn't Habib mm. did not have great kicking. Okay? Yeah, yeah, he did yeah, not. Sure, Habib yeah. didn't have great defense. He did mm. not. Okay. Habib was the best at taking you down. He was a master at taking you down and controlling you mm. on the ground. He still is. But mm -hmm. Islam has overall more tools than I've seen anybody ever. Mm. But I think Habib didn't need to have those things because he was no. so far advanced in that yeah. taking down and keeping you down. Okay. That is true. That is true. But that wasn't my statement. My statement well-rounded. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that that didn't say the best of all time. Yeah. That's yet to be determined, you know, yeah. and I don't know if it can be determined because to me, he's never lost, mm -hmm. you know, in the, how many rounds is he, But Islam Makachev, how many rounds has he lost? Mm. Not many, not, not many. many. But yeah. Habib still tops in, in regards to that. But you were saying Islam was the only one in training that won any rounds that you've ever seen against Khabib as well, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. He never won a sparring session. But he won rounds, and no yeah. one, no one's ever won rounds from Habib. And and my he won the battle, but not the war. <laughs> he won, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, he's the only one that was able to to take around here and there. Yeah, he was always competitive with Habib. Always, always, always Islam was. Do you think Habib sees Islam as the next, the future for that? Well, that weight class. If Habib doesn't see that, then I don't know what he's doing because he's talking him up pretty high. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. if he's talking him up pretty high, then then if he doesn't believe in it, then he's lying. And then mm. I don't know Habib to be a liar. So yeah, yeah. so I say, Habib feels like I do. Dude, what a, I'm so excited for this card that's coming and and this fight. It's a sick card. Uh, it's crazy, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> like it's it's. I think it's one of the best ones for quite a while now. It, it, you know, it definitely is, and I just, you know. First of all, my my number one wish is for my guys to win. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because we always want to yeah, put yeah. that out there, right? Yeah. But uh, it would be great if it if it materialized the way I think, because I think Sean O'Malley, Peter Yan is a barn burner. That's mm -hmm. a barn burner. Uh, T.J. Dill you know Dillashaw and, and uh, Al J. Yeah, I think that that potentially that has fireworks written yeah. all over it. And Islam and, and you know Charles, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm unsure. I'm unsure about that one, you know, because I don't know exactly how that's going to play out, you know, but uh, that could have be a fireworks too. It could but be. You think he's going to win? Doesn't matter how, but you think. I believe Islam is going to win. I don't know how. And, uh, you know, whether it be stand up or it be on the ground, I do know we're going to control where we're going to go. Mm -hmm. That I do know. We are going to control that. You what, know? what do you think is going to be the most effective thing against Charles? Hard to say. It's hard to say. It may be the stand-up. It may be the ground. I don't know. You know, uh, he's such a complete fighter with the exception of wrestling. He doesn't have wrestling. But mm -hmm. other than that, he's complete. He's got great jujitsu. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got great striking, great knees, great elbows, uh, great kicks. The guy is complete, you know, and he takes risk. He's long, uh, you know, got great coaches. I mean, and he comes back from behind. He's, mm -hmm. How many times does he come back from behind? When you think he's lost, he's out. How many times? That's changed a lot because in the beginning he wasn't like that, right? No. He had a few situations where it kind of seemed like he gave up on he the fight. He gave up, yeah. You know, and, and most people don't come back from that. No. So that's the more impressive thing, I think. It's super impressive that he went from losing as much as he did to winning as much as he has. Hmm. He He's an he's an incredible fighter. And, you know, uh, it's actually a big privilege to be able to fight him. And he's the champ, you know, no matter what anybody says, he's the champ. He's the He's the right champ right now. He's the champ. He's not the contender. He's the champ. But if he's not the best test for Islam, who would you say is now? If he's out of the equation? Yeah. Uh, I probably saw it for blowing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all good. <laughs> um, you know, it's between Dustin and, and, and Justin. It's yeah. one of those. I, I, I you know, I think it's those two. Uh, it, it could very well be, you know, um, Dustin. Mm. You know, and it could be Justin. It'd be an interesting fight. Yeah. What were your views on Nate's last fight? Uh, it was great. Uh, Nate's last fight was great. Uh, it was uh, a great way for him to to finish and to do what he wants to do. He's yeah. a trailblazer. Yeah. You know, he's a trailblazer. You look at him, he fights, he gets what he wants. He was never a champion, but he called his shots. Who yeah, yeah. calls a five round fight with not yeah. having a title and gets it? Who? Mm. Who does? Yeah. He does. You know, he, I mean, he's the people's champ as well. Yes. He will always be the people's champ, and I think yeah. sometimes that's that's a better legacy. And than... he didn't win the BMF title either. Yeah, and he's still the people's champ. I mean, and and uh, what he did uh, is incredible. Like, look when he when he's fighting Leon Edwards, right? He mm. was getting whooped pretty good and at the very end. Yeah, it points at him, yeah, like, points at, him at the yeah, very yeah. end. Had he not pointed and at continued him, continued to fight, he, yeah, he yeah. might have finished it. But that's Nate all over, isn't it? Yeah, he, yeah he's like, you know yeah. what? Just in case you were wondering. Yeah, just in case you're wondering. Take that with I you. got your number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before you sleep, remember this one. I could yeah, have finished exactly. you, but, you know, I'm in for the thing. Now, something that's crazy is Mexico has produced some of the most incredible boxers when it comes to boxing um, in history. What Do you think that they'll ever produce or take that striking into the MMA world? They are now. They're starting to now. They they have a little international league going on, the amateur league over there that they're doing amateur championships. And uh, the, Mexico is, is going to have future stars. As a matter of fact, they, they just signed one in the UFC, the youngest ever at 17 years of age. He kind of looks like a cross from uh, Bigfoot and uh, somebody else. He's got the kind of chin. 
in, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know his name, but they, 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 it's a hot prospect. Yeah. So that's from Mexico, and then he was he was hot into the amateurs, like I was telling you about. I guess he was a world champion in the mm. amateur uh, ranks that I'm talking about. So they're working. They're working. Mexico is is building a, a force, just like you know here in the UAE, they're building a force. Yeah, yeah. You know, Abdulmanam starting a great program with Palm Sports. You know, we're having the youth compete. You know, so it comes from that. And when you do that, you're gonna build. And uh, Mexico's building. You know, just like the UAE here is building, also. Yeah, because I mean, it can't be denied. The Mexican style of training, when it comes to boxers, they create. I mean, always fun to watch. Always fun to you watch. You know, they come into yeah, board. Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily the smartest. <laughs> yeah, at of times, course. But, but sometimes you like that kind of stuff. Yeah, because right? they come to fight. They come to and fight. and they come to fight and they come to win. I mean, I remember having arguments like this with people with it, because I've loved Khabib since day one. And people are like he's a boring fighter. No, he's a winning fighter. He like why would he do anything else when that's what all he needs to do and that's what he's good at. He's like oh he's tying him up and he's staying on the floor. It's like it's not it's not his fault. They can't do anything about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, he didn't just tie him up. He beat him up. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's one thing if you're just wrestling them and you're not trying to submit them. Yeah, he, yeah. Look, he, he when when he's on them, they can't get him off him. He gets he ties them up. That's what I mean. And it's then that he's, cross he's, leg yeah, thing. That, yeah, that thing's the worst. Yeah, he's the worst. My he, friend did that to me in yeah. the other day, and he literally said, I'm Khabibin you right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, but these guys aren't catching what he's doing. Yeah. And, and he, he's basically tying one arm. He's using his, his legs to, to yeah. clamp on you and then boom. And you don't see that, that reach no. behind as well, no. that he's no. got that other hand behind yeah. A lot of people yeah. are not looking yeah. at the little no, they're intricacies, not looking at intricacies yes. that's happening. Yes. They're just seeing it on just such a yeah. base level. If they looked at it, they go, this guy's like, unbelievable. Ah, yeah. He's unbelievable. Because his brain's working so fast. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, nobody can tell you how great he is until they go with him yeah, right? and i've yet to see anybody anybody within his size do anything to him you know everyone is a boxer until they get punched in the face right yeah That's the thing. and, and the, this is the thing about habib it's like you know i used to tell him uh why would i want you to do something that i know these guys could potentially beat you and when i know no one can beat you on the mm. ground so why did I develop? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, right? why, yeah, why did I develop father's plan? Yeah, yeah. Why do I keep saying father's plan to him? Because his father raised him as a grappler. His mm. father raised him from the ground up, you know. And I wanted to, you know, honor his father, so I would always say father's plan, father's plan, and made it very yeah. famous. So, you know, there's also going to be a big clothing line coming up real soon uh, cool. called Father's cool. Plan in honor of his father. Nice. You know? And uh, for that very reason, you know, and. Yeah, uh, Habib can stand, believe it or not. At the very end there, before he retired, I was putting him in with pro boxers, and mm. he just boxed with them. Box with them. You're not getting beat. Yeah. But a lot of people are thinking, they think the old Habib. They say, oh, he can't box, he can't do this. But, I mean, he did yeah. it against Connor. Yeah. He was like, okay, let's yeah. stand up for a bit. He did it against the, uh, the last three yes, or four fights. Yes, he did a lot of standing. Yes, and he got better, and he had a broken toe to boot, the whole bit, but he was still... Yeah, but broken toe. Yeah, not gonna stop. Matter, no. Mm. And that's the thing that, that now you're understanding. A lot of people are thinking they look back. Oh, he can't. He can't brawl. He can't box. I mean, not brawl. He can't box. He can. Yes, he can. He couldn't before. That's yeah. for sure. No, he couldn't. No, but but he could at the end. And that's because he put in the, the effort to learn to box, to learn to kick, to learn to knee. Mm. Dude, when you've got someone saying, "Coach, I didn't want to break his arm because his parents were there," <laughs> <laughs> like who's thinking about that during a fight? Do you know what I mean? Most people yeah. are trying to stay alive or finish the fight or whatever. But when you can stop for a second, he basically that's basically somebody taking a selfie during a yeah. fight. Well, you know, it's even like when he was fighting fighting Michael Johnson yeah. and uh, the UFC gave him a title title contract. But they pulled it from him because they were trying to get Connor to fight yeah. uh, Eddie Alvarez and uh, Habib. While he's fighting, he's talking to Dana, yeah. you know, Dana, telling I'm Dana, boy. you know, yeah, I'm going to smash your boy. Yeah, you yeah. know, where's your chicken now? Yeah, you yeah. know, this is exactly, don't send me no more bullshit contracts. Yeah, yeah. He's talking to Dana, and Dana's yeah. like, tell him, hey, worry about your fight then. I mean, don't yeah. worry, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, look, and I'm not trying to get him to stop yeah. talking to Dana, and he's not listening to me. He's talking to everyone, and he's also on the floor, ground and pounding, going, you know, I deserve this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I know this more than you. It's like, man, yo. What are your views on Hamzat? Hamzat is unbelievable uh you know when i met him at the apex in las vegas that's the ufc training center i watched him work out and i said wow he was working out with uh, latir latifi mm -hmm. uh and uh i was like 
this guy's amazing. And I watched him shadow box. I'm going to hit the bag. And this is before he said, I'm done. I retired because mm -hmm. he felt that the COVID got, remember he had got mm -hmm. COVID and yeah. he, he was retired. And, and uh, I was so impressed with him. I said, wow, this guy's going to be amazing. Right. And then I hear he retired and I'm like, huh? Yeah. Who retired? How, <laughs> how, how the guy's so talented. I go, why would he retire? And then of course, you know, uh, he got talked by the Chechen president mm -hmm. to come back. So he came back and, um, yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's an amazing fighter. It's we'll see how far he goes, but I wouldn't be so shocked, uh, you know, if he's the champ soon. I would not be shocked. I would have liked to see the Nate fight, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think know Nate, Nate. I think Nate got a great, great exit. Yeah, he did get a great. great I'm exit. happy for Nate that yeah. way. Who are your top five fighters of all time? Any top, weight class? It, top five. Uh, the ones that I like are the ones that I think are the best. Interesting. Give me both. Okay. The ones I think are the best, I, I say Demetrius, uh, Mike GSP, uh, uh, John Jones, DC, Habib, uh, Cain Velasquez. That's uh, like seven. Fedor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm five. sorry. <laughs> I'm only at five. Okay. Okay. Let, let's uh, take him back. Okay. So uh, Mighty Mouse, um, Habib. GSP, Anderson Silva, and they're so tough. I just yeah. go go Fedor. Yeah, nice. Um, top five coaches of all time: Andre Pedneris, Henry Hooth, uh, Mike Winkle, John, Greg uh, Greg Jackson. Nice. You know, not gonna put yourself in there. No, no, no. I'm putting you in there. It's fine. How now? <laughs> What's next, do you think, for Islam when he wins on 23rd? Well, what's next for Islam, I hope, I hope, is uh, uh, the champ, the 145 champ. If, when, no, I don't want, I don't want to say if, I should, that's wrong. When we win that title, yeah. I would like. Manifest, we need to manifest. Yeah, manifest it. I always do that, I, I, and I do believe in it. So yeah. uh, I would like the, the featherweight champ, Alex. I would like that. I think that would be That'll great be because time. because he's he's at pound for pound right now, right? Mm. So it'd be a great challenge uh, for him, and it'd be a great great fight for Islam. How, do you think you can make it happen? I mean, I, how, I, how much control do you have over these kind of things? Zero, zero, right? <laughs> zero. I'm manifesting. Maybe I can have one percent. Dana, if you're yeah. hearing, if you're yeah. hearing this, Dana, please, please on, give Dana, us Alex. Give the people what they want. Yeah. man. I think Alex would want that fight too. I think so. I think so. It'd be great for him. You know, because, mm. I mean, he's cleared out the division pretty much, right? Mm. Yeah, who's left? I don't know. Yeah. Did you watch the Bam Bam and Cyril Gahn fight? No, I didn't. I watched highlights. Uh, <laughs> I watched Bam, the highlights. Bam's a good friend, man. That, yeah. that was heartbreaking to me. But at the same time, he didn't lose any of his stock in that fight. I don't feel like. No, he comes to fight. He yeah. comes to fight. You know, he's he's incredible. I, I I love Bam. He's my guy. Yeah. You know, he's my guy. You know, he's, he's always... Uh, when the first time I met him, I met him in Australia when he was talking about come down train with us, you know, yeah. and uh, he did come train with us uh, for one camp, you know, and uh, he was great. He was great. You know, great. Again, I feel like he suits you guys so much just because of that. His banter and his camaraderie is very similar to, yeah. to the way you guys do things. Yeah. He fit in with us real, real, yeah. real well. I mean, he's still we all still consider him our guy because yeah. he's not with us because he can't come there or whether he could or couldn't, I don't know, but the COVID situation got him stuck. Yeah, he couldn't sense. come. And, uh, now he's made a name for himself and, and I'm very proud of him. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I just felt like even after that fight, his stock went up and it just shows him and Cyril were laughing and messing around during the fight, which kind of showed that kind of mutual respect kind of thing. And it was, it was lovely to see. I did want the win, but <laughs> there's nothing you can Came do Came close, about that. though, right? Yeah. I saw clips where he clipped them yeah, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it was, I was in Buffalo Wild Wings going mad <laughs> during, during that part. Now, I feel like this is something very important. And, and I, I'd like to know your opinion about it. How do you think or what do you think fighters should do to prepare themselves for a future outside of the cage? Because a lot of people, when it comes to sports, football, soccer, fighting... They're so busy just doing their thing that they don't realize that it's coming to an end. Eventually, it's coming to an end. And they don't prepare for that 
the next life. Yeah. So what I do yeah. when the guys, when I see that they're, they're coming to that point where they're starting to make good money, you know, or they're coming yeah. to that point where <laughs> they may, maybe should be looking for an exit out. I start talking to them about, Hey, you know, you ever think about, you know, why you have your celebrity status to use that, to open up a business, to get involved in something that you love, you know, so you have a backup plan, you know? So I'd always been doing that. I've been doing that for quite a while, telling them that. And one guy in particular got really pissed off at me because I kept trying to get him. He had a big, mm. he had a good name, but he was never going to be a champion. But he had mm. a good name. I won't say his name, but you know, he got so pissed off at me. He goes, "Why the f you keep telling me to go look for another job? What yeah. the hell's the matter with you? I still want to fight. I'm going to be a champion." I go, "Look, I'm not saying you yeah. can't be a champion. I'm just saying that you should prepare for the second, yeah. the second part of your life you yeah. know because you're in the position now where you have the fame you can you can change it to something i, I don't care about that stuff i'm gonna be champion sure and enough the, the accent gave it away. yeah <laughs> didn't become champion yeah, yeah didn't become champion and uh now he's lost somewhere yeah you know and uh that that backfired with that individual but everybody else that i've had that talk with has uh, you know gone really well habib yeah has had that talk from his father, from me. Well, he has and, ego now and, as well. And uh, Habib's got everything now, mm. you know, and he's, he's becoming a, uh, he's a great coach now, and I predict he's going to be the greatest coach of all time also. That's my that's my goal. That's my wish. And that's what we're working towards. And so far, so good. It must be hard when it comes to you telling a fighter, especially somebody who you work with, hey, man, it's time to, it's, it's not working out for you. Because obviously the, nobody wants to hear that as a fighter, the ego will kick in. What are you trying to say? You know, I think I'm still doing good. But you looking out for him, you kind of want to just be like, well. I failed every time trying that. Yeah. I failed. Look, I even failed with a kid that wasn't going anywhere. And he had like four or five concussions. Mm -hmm. I even talked to his father saying, hey, you know, I think you should help me with your son. He doesn't have a future and I'm, I'm afraid of his health, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is like his fifth concussion in the gym, not the fights. Not even the fights, yeah. And, and, and I think he, you know, I think he should talk to him, you know, and, you know, and that didn't work. Did not work. Mm. Did not work. And this is a kid that was just barely beginning as a pro. You know, I tried with other fighters in the past that were world champions, you know, in kickboxing. I said, hey, you know, and you need to give it up, hang it up, blah, blah. Didn't work. Now I don't do that. No, nope. mm. I just, you know, there's nothing you can do, right? No, nothing. Course. But I do talk to them about doing something while they're fighting and use that to to, to indirectly to start it earlier. Start, give it a little start another another career. <clears throat> I do do that. I still do that. But retirement, mm. I've never been successful. So I'll take it as um, <laughs> I'm I'm probably Owen Owen <laughs> fifty or something like that. Yeah. I, I've never been successful with it. Yeah, who who do you think is the guys to watch out for now the young the young guys both professionally signed and the ones that aren't well known who have a bright future um from from the habib team he's got so many it's ridiculous but i'll, I'll tell you uh the one that's known now is uzman who's going to fight for the world title in bellator he's going to win it uh, he he's, he's too damn good he's winning he'll win he'll win the title um Umar, of course, everybody knows, uh, you know, Usman's uh, brother, uh, Umar, he's going to mm. win the title too when, when his time comes up. Um, other than that, Habib has this one kid named Amaru, and he's fighting at the UAE Warriors, uh, I believe, uh, the nice. 17th or 19th. Watch for him. He's going to be unbelievable. He's got another kid named Murad, who's like 11 and 0. Um, and he's got another guy, Ima Shafi. He's got quite a few. He's got quite a few. At, at AKA, I have one kid in particular that I think is going to be great as Mo Alarek. Mo, Mo fought at the UAE Warriors the two most times. Recent. Yeah. 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 He, he, he's going to be something to watch. I think he's going to be a world champion at some point down the line. But uh, yeah, th those are some in particular. Is there any outside of your teams that you've kind of seen and you're like, hmm? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, I've watched so many that I'm thinking, oh, this guy's going to be this, mm. that's going to be that. Um, I think Sean O'Malley is 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 a really impressive. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see this know, fight. I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how he, well he does, but uh, I think he's very interesting. Um, 
outside of him. No, not really. No. So now, if you were to kind of give any advice through all your experience, obviously you know what makes champions, right? <clears throat> what advice would you give to young fighters who are, you know, planning this as their career? Well, the, the first thing is like you got to love it. You got to want to get up in the morning. You have to want to do this on your own. You can't be encouraged to get to the gym. Because if you're doing that, if you're having that issue, get out. Get out because if you're not loving what you're doing and you don't have that drive to be the best in the world, then this is probably not the sport for you. You know, um, don't wait for it to come to you. You go to it. You can't wait. You can't wait for something. You can't wait for advice to come to you. You got to go out and get them. You know, it's like anything, right? You want to get good at something, you know, you, you have to learn to crawl. From crawling, you learn to walk. From walking, you learn to run. From running, you learn to sprint, you know, and, and that type of thing. So you have to go after it and get it. If you don't, you can't expect great results. Mm. Dude, <clears throat> that's some amazing advice. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Time, I don't want to keep you for too long. We've been <laughs> almost an hour and a half. Oh, we have? Yeah. <laughs> Time oh. flies when you're having fun. Wow. Yeah. He's bored. He's just watching, <laughs> reading over there. He's always <laughs> reading this guy. Um, I'm wishing you all the best of luck in the future. And also this month, um, I'll give you my t-shirt size because I need one for when we're in the corner. I'm okay. gonna come a corner with you on this on this next fight. Um, I'll just let you know. Don't worry. All right, no problem. You know, just tell them there's gonna be some random guy <laughs> that, who's there. But yeah, look, all the best of luck. Um, inshallah, we're gonna have that win. And uh, this is your house. Whenever you want to come back and and uh, talk, we're always here to have a chat. Thanks for taking out the time. Is there anything that you felt like we missed out? There's always a lot, but you know, I talk too much as it is. Dude, so, I'll stay man. here for four hours. It's not, it's not a big deal for me, dude. <laughs> no, he, he's, he's right there. He's bedtime. This over guy, there. he's yeah, asleep when we yeah, started, dude. That's yeah. what he does. He sleeps. <laughs> he sleeps. Um, yeah, but thank you so much. No problem. Um, I've been AJ. He's been Coach Have. Boom. Boom.